So today we're going to talk about setting up your paper in MLA format using Google Docs. Um, when you start a new document, you always want to give it a name. So I've just called this one MLA Doc. You can also control where it goes quite easily, where it's saved in your Google Drive. And so usually on a new document, it'll just say untitled document in Google Drive. If you want to change that, you can click this little move icon and put it in a specific folder for a class or a specific folder for a project. Next, we want to check on, oh no, let's talk about font next. Um, MLA used to be very particular. Everything had to be Times New Roman 12 point font. Um, it's not as strict anymore. I'm not as strict about it as long as you choose a professional looking font in 11 or 12 point. Um, that's up to the teacher. So if you need to change your font, you would click here and here. Please, for, for a formal essay, do not ever pick kind of a cutesy, informal, curly Q font or try to make it bigger so that your teacher thinks your paper is longer. You're not fooling anyone. It just discredits you. Um, margins. MLA does require one inch margins. And so you want to go, sorry, I went too quickly, file, um, page setup, and just double check. That's the default. But if you've been playing around with the margins on other documents, it may not be set that way anymore. So double check. Um, don't try to make your margins bigger in order to make your paper look longer. That's another thing like increasing the font size that discredits you. Next, let's double space before we ever type anything. So this icon right here is line spacing with the up and down arrow and the three lines. Double space is not the default. I've just already set this one here. You want to click double. If you've already typed something in your paper, um, without double spacing or without setting that first, make sure you command A or select all before you click the double spacing so that the formatting will apply to everything in the document. Okay, next let's talk about the header. MLA requires a header. So we're going to start by inserting the page numbers, which are required. And so we're going to go insert and then page numbers and this first one where we can see every page is numbered in the top right corner. There we go. Um, in front of it, you need to type your last name. So for me, that's Martin, and you want to make sure there is a space between your name and the page number, so hit the space bar. Um, you can leave the header just by double-clicking outside of it, and now we're on the top line of the paper. Finally, MLA requires a heading on the left side. Make sure you are no longer in the header before you type this. Anything you type in the header appears at the top of every page and we don't want that. The heading needs to be on the first page only. So um, you start with your name. Names go on top and so we'll do first and last name, enter once, and then the teacher's name. Um, with your teacher's name, if if you, your teacher is a married woman, MRS period, um, if you're not sure, the safe bet is to just type your teacher's last name only. Um, or your teacher could potentially be a doctor, um, and you don't want to type MRS if your teacher's a doctor. And so the safest bet is to just type your teacher's last name. And so we'll say we're typing this for um, Mr. Smith. The next line needs to be the title of the class. And so be as specific as possible. English 9, period 1. If it's an honors course or an AP course, you can type that in front. Um, just look at the formal title for your document. Finally, the last line of the heading should include the date, and you want to do the date the assignment is due, not the date you started typing it, especially if that date is the day before the due date. It's another thing that discredits you, and so you'll type um, day, the day that it's due, so let's say it's due on the 20th, and then the month that it's due, and then the year that it's due. This formatting of the date does not require you to use any commas. After the date, we'll hit enter once, we'll center, and then we need to give the paper a title, choose something that's appropriate for your assignment, and then we'll left align here, and from here we'll begin typing our paper, remembering to indent the first line of each paragraph as you go. Okay. 
So next, let's talk about how to add a works cited to this paper. Um, the, the best thing to start with is a page break. Inserting a page break in a document inserts an invisible place marker or line in the document um, where the text will always start at the top of a new page, and that's where you want your works cited to be. So um, before we do anything with the paper, let's go ahead and insert the works cited. And so we're going to insert, break, page break. Now it's very easy, so we're going to start at the top of a new page, and no matter what we type above this, this line will always jump down to a new page. But it's very easy to just back up and delete this. And if you do that, you just go back and insert, break, page break. Okay, so this will be the top of our work cited. Notice that our header, which should be your last name, and the page number, which for right now is two, um, is already there for you. And so the top line of the work cited should be the title. So we're going to center, and then we're going to type works cited. Make sure you've spelled everything correctly. Capitalize both words. Make sure works is plural because we're citing more than one thing. And then we'll enter down once. We should still be double spaced because we did that at the very beginning. Uh, and then we're going to left align again. Now, works cited entries are indented very differently than paragraphs. So paragraphs have a regular indent where the first line is indented half an inch. Works cited entries um, are, are the opposite, essentially. The first line of the works cited entry is not indented at all, but any subsequent line is indented a half an inch. So a lot of times students try to hit enter and hit tab, but you don't have to do that. It's much easier if you set the indent properly. And so on this first line of the works cited, before we even type anything, we're going to indent this at what's called a hanging indent. So if we go format, um, align and indent, and then indentation options, and then under special indent we're going to click hanging, and it should say half an inch there already. If it doesn't, you can change it, and then click apply. It doesn't really look that much like anything's different, but you'll see when you start typing that you'll get that proper hanging indent. Um, here you'll see that the ruler has changed, and if you can't see this, you can click View and Show Ruler, and you'll see that you've got this hanging indent set up already here. It should look like this. If you accidentally delete it out and it goes back like that, you can always reinsert or highlight any text that you want indented in that way and go align and indent, indentation options, hanging, and apply, and it'll pop back into place. Um, if you start hitting enter in the middle of works cited entries, the hanging indent will not work properly. So from here, you just want to type out your works cited entry. And every time you hit enter, it will automatically adjust back to the uh, left margin and indent any subsequent lines the way it's supposed to be. If you have a works cited entry that you have copied and pasted, say, from a database source, and you want to put it over here and get it in the correct format, um, you can go over and copy, and then put your cursor here where you want it, and then instead of just hitting Command P or Edit Paste here, because it will mess up your formatting, if you go all the way to the top up here and hit Edit, paste in match style, uh, Google Docs will put that text in and paste it in the format of this document. So it will make the font match, it'll make the indent match as long as you have it set up, it'll make the color of the text correct and that sort of thing. The only thing you may have to fix is if there is any text within that citation that needs to be italicized, um, you'll have to format those things. So go through and look for like book titles and database titles and italicize them, but everything should come out just fine. Um, just as a reminder, works cited entry should be in alphabetical order according to the last name of the author or the first word in the citation. It's easiest if you just type things in order as you go. All right, that should have you all set up.